This is one of the first films that we have that you see on screen. It was made in the late 1800s by the French film pioneers Auguste and Louis Lumiere. And rumor has it that when audiences saw it for the first time in Paris, they jumped out of their seats because they thought perhaps there was an actual train that was going to burst through the screen and come into the theater. And it seems silly to us today, something that is just an illusion, uh, that was not so obvious to them at that time. But what's meaningful about this is that it speaks to the power of film and the ability it had to change our perceptions about the world around us. And you can see that the language of cinema was going to be developed from this, that pretty soon we'd have editing and close-ups and wide shots, and that this language that we know today of cinema was taking place and starting to take shape. And in cinema now, after so many years have gone by, we have some really standout pieces of work you know, that have changed our perceptions about how we see the world around us. Think about a film like The Matrix. How many times do we say to each other, are we living in The Matrix? or something like the film Inception, with which bends and warps how we see time. And there's something similar that we can do with this medium as well, and that's called in virtual reality, or VR as we call it. VR has the power to connect us to each other in ways that no other creative medium can. And so, like those people in Paris in that theater who were maybe a little scared in the beginning of seeing this, I was a little scared, too, when I first started VR, to work in VR. I thought that putting this headset on would effectively disconnect me from the world around me, and that it would cut down on human intimacy and connection to each other, which are the very bonds that make us human. And I also thought that just because you can do something, just because you have the means and ability to do something new, doesn't necessarily mean that you should. Like anything, the advent of something new comes with tremendous possibility, but also the possibility for harm. And I realized when I got into it, you know, beyond just looking silly like I do in this photo, I mean, you have all the gear, you have the headset, you have the wires, you have touch controllers, sometimes you're wearing a backpack. Beyond just kind of looking silly um, and having all this gear, what I realized is that there's something deeper to be said about this technology. What does it mean that we can do what we can do? And why is it important in connecting us to each other and reminding us of that universality of human connection? So also, the deeper that I got into it, I realized it was a little bit like riding a bike. You can have all the gear. You can buy the helmet. You can buy a fancy bike. You can buy some riding gloves. But at the end of the day, you really have to get on that bike, and you have to go somewhere. You actually have to learn to ride it if you want to go on a journey. And it's the same thing in VR. So I've always been more interested in channeling human behavior and being able to put that into artistic mediums. And I've always been wanting to search and connect with people around me in different ways, and to people that I may never have the opportunity to meet in real life. So now a few years have gone by, and we know that we can tell stories and elicit a feeling of presence in VR. And we know that we can experience certain things that this medium only offers, but another thing that it really offers is the ability to live as somebody else would, to have all of these sensory emotions, to touch something the way someone else would touch it, to smell what they would be able to smell, to feel what they would feel, to experience things as they would. And this word experience is really important. And when we talk about VR, we say that somebody experiences something, not just watches it. I experienced this VR piece. I didn't watch this VR piece. And we use that word because you can really experience it. It's not just watching something. I mean, other forms of media are more or less passive. As impactful as it may be, you're not actually participating in something the way that you can in VR. So, if we're able to experience something as somebody else would and feel what they feel, touch what they touch, smell what they smell, we're able to live their truth. And we can do this in VR. And when we're able to live their truth and have their memories, that's also what makes VR so unique and impactful. Our ability to remember our memories are what make us who we are. Nobody else on the planet has our exact memories. 
We have ownership over them. And in today's world where we have so much information that we put out into the world, we're easily connected to each other, and so many things of ours are used without our consent, our memories are what remain intact. It's the foundation of our identity and personal embodiment. If I can experience something as someone else would, it will teach me more about myself. Because if I can have these memories or experiences, it'll imprint on my own mind and memory. And indeed, I can change my entire perspective. One of the first VR films that I was on the producing team for was a film called Perspective, directed by Rose Trochet. And it was about a police brutality incident in New York City. And police brutality is a big issue in the US. It's a big topic that's happening all the time. And this was a POV piece, so you could choose between four different perspectives. You could be two New York City cops, or you could be two African-American brothers. And imagine that. I could actually be this person. If I was the cop, I could look down and I could see my arms and my legs. I could see that I was wearing a uniform. I was this person. And similarly, if I was one of the children, I had my backpack on, I was talking to my brother. It was just a normal day. And suddenly, we're followed out of the store. The cop thinks that we stole something. He's coming after us. He's shouting after us. And we don't think that we did anything wrong, so we just keep going. And suddenly, it escalates. The officer demands to see what I have in my bag. I don't want to give it to him. And I'm separated from my brother. Things get very, very confusing. It all happens very, very quickly. And I'm shoved to the ground. The officer calls for his friend to come, and all of a sudden, the other officer comes. I'm knocked to the ground again, and I'm shot. And the world warps around me. The sound becomes completely disoriented. And the last thing I see is my brother calling for help as my eyes slowly close. And from my point of view of the officer, it looked like maybe this kid was pulling a gun from his pocket, but it was just a phone. So you see how easily things like this can happen and escalate. And biologically, after something like that, you feel like you lived that experience. And it creates, again, an illusion on your own memory. And you form a type of memory that merges with this other person's. So it feels like it becomes something of your own. And I was speaking with a friend before this film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, and she said to me, but do people really want to see that? Do people really want to see somebody go through something like that and experience it as if you lived it? And it was kind of an aha moment for me, because I felt, well, OK, well, what can this medium offer to us that you can't get from reading a book or watching a play? And I realized that one of the hallmarks of humanity is being able to remember things, even as distant memories, and the ability to live someone else's experiences I could have a new POV, and it made me question things. This experience also does not, it made me feel like I can't see things in the same way anymore with topics like this. I asked myself, well, what did I see as one of those kids, or what didn't I see as one of the cops? And I don't look at this the same way anymore at all. There's another VR experience that had a big impact on me, and it's called Notes on Blindness. It was created by a man who's a colleague of mine now named Arnold Kolinar. And it documents the process of a, of a now uh, a late British author. His name was John Hull. And he began losing his sight several decades ago. And what he did is he recorded audio diaries of the process of losing his sight so that when he eventually went blind, he could go back and listen to those cassette tapes and feel what it was like to be at the park, for instance, or to sit on his front porch and watch kids play. And this experience was so impactful on me. You really feel as if you're there, and you really feel as if you're seeing everything around you. When he describes something through his audio diaries, and you hear his voice in your ears when, you're, when you have the headset on, you see everything come to life around you. You see the wind blow through the trees. You see leaves blowing on the ground. It's so beautiful. And everything becomes very, very hyper real. The myriad voices and sounds create a panorama of music and information. 
Where there is no activity, there's no sound. And then that part of the world dies. So that's just a small little clip of that, and it's completely different when you actually watch it. But you can see that this is something that really can only take place in this medium. In an interesting turn of events, after a few months after I saw this experience, my own mother suffered a serious emergency with her eyes, and she was at risk of losing her own sight. And I was in her house, and I was helping her try to adjust to what maybe was going to be a total life change. And I had no way to connect with her on that. I couldn't see what she was seeing. I couldn't feel what she was going through and experiencing. But because I had seen this VR experience, I was able to connect with her on a level that I didn't think was possible. She had an institute for the blind come and, and install these little buttons all over her house on appliances that she used a lot, like her coffee maker or her washing machine. And so I was helping her kind of do all of this. And I was able to connect with her in a way beyond words. And indeed, it's kind of impossible to put into words what that was like. But I could, because I had this experience where I could see and feel what it was like, when I took away all of those other emotions, there was something about that experience that reminded me of the simplicity of life. And that was really beautiful and important when understanding my mother's own illness. There's a VR pioneer named Jaron Lanier who has really had a big impact on me. And he's one of the people who first coined the term uh, virtual reality. And he had a startup in the 1980s in Silicon Valley that made some of the first headsets and, or modern head-mounted displays. And he believes that we should never separate a discussion of technological advances from their human effects. And he has this phrase called doubling down on being human that basically means that as we redefine what it means to be human in light of these technologies, it becomes more important than ever to express and exercise our unique points of view to remind us of what defines us as being uniquely human. And these glitches and mistakes in the technological field should be embraced because these are also a hallmark of our humanity. We're not perfect people. And we can perhaps relate to each other in ways that we have done throughout all of time, ironically, through this technology. There's one more VR experience I'd like to talk about, and that's a piece by the director Alejandro Iñárritu, and it's called Carne y Arena, and it plays in a few places in the world. And one of the places that it's at is at a museum in Los Angeles called LACMA. And you go inside this room, and for a minute you forget you're at this major cultural institution that's in the middle of a huge urban city. And you put this headset on. Well, first you take your shoes off, you're barefoot, and you step into a large space that's filled with dirt. And you put this headset on. And the space itself is also filled. Uh, there's a large walls everywhere that are made of sheet metal. And they're border walls. So you step into the dirt with this headset. And suddenly, you're in the middle of the desert. And you don't really know where you are, but you, you also smell that you're in the desert. And all of a sudden, there's people walking towards you. And as you get closer to them, you see that they are migrants. They also have no shoes. They're carrying water, and they're very tired. And it's lots of children with them as well. And suddenly, a helicopter comes overhead. The backpack that you're wearing starts to vibrate. You feel the vibrations of that as it gets closer to you. Lights shine down. People start screaming. Trucks pull up, shine their lights on you, and you realize that you're on the border between the US and Mexico, and you're trying to get in, inside the United States. And as they get out of the car, the border agents, and shine their lights on you and get out their guns, you don't need to speak English or Spanish to understand what is happening. You've been caught. And you're forced onto the ground on your knees. And so many things start to happen so quickly as they start separating people, and there's so much confusion. This experience was one of the most impactful pieces I've ever seen. I felt like I myself had gone through this. I could smell everything. I could feel the wind blowing as the helicopter got closer. And let me tell you, I don't look at migrants or displaced people in the same way anymore. For a split second, 
I went through something that they were going through. It's not the same thing. It's absolutely not the same thing. But because I, of course, didn't have that same level of fear. At the end of the day, I knew I was inside of a museum. But for a split second, I could experience a piece of that fear that these people go through. So as we move forward into the future, we should be creating work that can only take place in this medium. That's what makes it so unique. If we remember that what it offers us is a chance to ignite something within ourselves that we didn't know was there, that's where it's going to mean the most and resonate. And it may be a little bit of an old-fashioned myth that we go out into the world to seek new things, only to find the truths that we were looking for right at home. But that's what we do. We're humans. We're explorers. We build rockets and go to space. We're always going to want to find new ways to communicate with each other on deeper levels. That's just a hallmark of our humanity. And so through these really extraordinary ways, VR makes me feel more human, ironically, that rem by reminding me that I'm not anything other than myself. And it has the potential to show us different versions of ourselves that makes us question who we are and who we're going to be. And today, more than ever, this matters. Karistopoli, thank you.